stupider. <laughs> Come on. This is an intelligent, attractive group. You've noticed it. I'm not the only one. <laughs> 20 years I've struggled with this subject. And society isn't getting any smarter. In 1990, I lived in Moscow, Russia. If you were my roommate, the only distraction we would have had from that 20 by 20 cell that we call the room, and from the smell of the shared bathroom, was a little radio in the wall. It gave us our music and our news. We knew that the news was state controlled by a bunch of morons. And yet, we hungered for that information. That was our only source of information. No internet, no television. And we let them tell us what to think. I started to think, this can't be happening in the United States. But then I saw it last month. Last month, we had a health care debate. Two sides carefully controlling the information that the public got. And we all ate it up. We chose to reject the facts that we didn't believe, and we accepted all the facts that supported our particular prejudice. And it's because our brains are hardwired to look for patterns. We see patterns in tortillas. We see patterns in numbers. The problem is our cortex. Our brain processes most of the facts that we need up here in the cortex. But before it gets to the cortex, we have to deal with the hippocampus. <laughs> the hippocampus looks for patterns. It rejects things that don't fit into a particular pattern. And therefore, audiences reject information that you give them that doesn't fit into their particular prejudice. Most audiences will pay attention to you for eight seconds eight seconds before they choose to reject your message or drop their nose into their blackberries. Eight seconds is all you have to break out of the hippocampus and into the cortex. Now, armed with this information, how do you use it? How do you get to somebody's decision making? Because people need the information that you have. You're brilliant, but you first have to give them a framework. You have to let them look at this information the way you want them to look at it. So give them a framework. Break in with a bold question. Are people getting stupider? Follow up with a great story that they can be part of. And be bold. Because in marketing, we all know you're either extraordinary or you're invisible. And your message is extraordinary. It can't be invisible. So make sure it's bold. You don't want to fade into the background. You also can't rely on just the information alone to get you through. Because there's something more important than information. It's the way in which you present the information. Give it to them in a logical format. Something that they can use to think critically about the next step. Because if step A isn't followed by step B and step C, your hippocampus and your cortex will both reject the message. Most of us are brilliant. Agreed? Yes. If you didn't raise your hands, you can leave. Brilliant people have a hard time with the rest of the world because the rest of the world put their hands over their eyes when they're confronted with information that they can't process. So really the message is up to you, the giver, not the receivers. They're not smart enough to process the information. So give it to them in a way they can understand it. If you want, use the Socratic method. If you don't remember the Socratic method, it's not your fault. Society has completely forgotten. Reason, thinking. Do it for them. Give the information to them in a way that they can use it. And when you're done, leave. There's no reason to stand up here and continue to beat them with information. They're not going to listen to you. At most, a group can listen to a speaker for about five minutes. Nicely job, nicely done job on this. Give them a list of resources they can use when they leave. When I'm done, there'll be a list of resources on the back table that you can do, you can use to find out more about this particular topic. And finally, if you find yourself rejecting information, give yourself 10 seconds. 
does this information warrant some additional study? And if you find an idea that makes you brilliant, be bold, be brilliant, and then be gone. Thanks, Mitch.